Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be getting fired into a couple of topics on PC gaming and PC gaming hardware. First up, we've got the official details of the 7 nanometer Ryzen 3 lineup, which is now officially going to be launching on May 21st. So just a month away from now, AMD will be launching their budget lineup of Ryzen 3rd generation 7 nanometer processors. And also we have some more studios that have now been dropped from GeForce now, adding to the list of several publishers out there that are removing their games from there, really asking the question as to why anyone would want to get a GeForce Now subscription when you can't even play the majority of games that you actually own yourself. Did you just finish building a sweet gaming rig only to have this happen to you? Not to worry because your CD key has you covered with Windows 10 Pro licenses for under $18. And if you head over there right now, you could save 20% off with my code JPD20 at checkout. You receive your key within seconds and then just click the start button and type activate to find the Windows activation screen. And all you gotta do then is paste your code in. For more info as well as that coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So first we're gonna kick things off with AMD's third generation Ryzen budget CPUs. These are going to be named the Ryzen 3 3300X and the Ryzen 3 3100 and as with previous generation Ryzen processors these are going to be the budget lineup of CPUs the high the higher end uh, model here the 3300X is going to be priced at a comfortable $120 while the Ryzen 3 3100 will be priced at a clean $99 so very budget oriented these will be pairing up nicely with the new B550 chipset which will still be on AM4 so you don't need to you don't need to get a new motherboard to be able to take advantage of these processors but you know if you want things like PCI 4 compatibility and getting double the bandwidth over B450 which AMD advertised in their press release which was released um, just about a half hour ago really 9 a.m. Eastern time they posted this to the public I'm expected to be sitting in on a briefing later today about these processors and obviously I'll be bringing you guys uh, day one review content uh, once we're able to talk a little bit more about these processors and the performance and all of that but let's take a quick look over at the press release from AMD where we've got the full specs on the Ryzen 3 CPUs. As I said, the 3300X is going to be priced at $120. Both of these CPUs are hyper-threaded, so both of them are four cores and eight threads. So we're not going to have any just straight four core CPUs here without the hyper-threading. That's going to be present on both processors no matter which one you go with. Both have a 65 watt TDP, but the more expensive 3300X is going to have a higher base and boost frequency of 3.8 gigahertz on the base and a boost of 4.3 gigahertz, while the $99 3100 is going to have a base of 3.6 gigahertz and a boost of 3.9. Both will have an 18 megabyte cache AM4 socket. The only real difference here is going to be the price of $20 and the frequency is going to be a bit higher on the 3300X. So these just might be a little bit better, uh, better binned uh, CPUs as they're gonna be running the same TDP, but able to hit some higher frequencies. So you might have some better overclocking potential there. It's not to say that with the 3100 you couldn't hit uh, the speeds of the 3300X, but you would probably have to maybe put in some more voltage, maybe a little bit higher temps, but the Ryzen 3 lineup tends to run quite cool anyway, so I really wouldn't be um, too concerned about it. AMD has said that these processors are going to be available in May, while the AMD B550 motherboards are expected to be available beginning June 16th, 2020 from partners like ASRock, Asus, Biostar, Colorful, Gigabyte, and MSI from leading retailers and e-tailers, although a lot of retailers are closed right now, so probably most people will be relying on uh, online shops, e-tailers like Amazon and Newegg to be able to get these chips, these motherboards, as well as the processors, which we've only got about a month to go now, to where we can expect to actually see those, so that is exciting to see. And please let me know down in the comments below if the Ryzen 3 CPUs are something that you're excited to be uh, released. Actually, I am quite looking forward to these as I'm currently looking to build a gaming PC um, for my fiance's son. Keep that in the download because you can hear me right now. He's home, at home doing all his schoolwork. Um, but yeah, she wanted to do a whole uh, PC and everything like that and uh, switch over from like a console setup to a PC setup. So that's something I will be covering on the channel, doing that transition and stuff like that. So uh, keep an eye out for that because it's going to be a complete overhaul um, 
of his bedroom space, uh, you know, getting everything all set up like that with the desk and all. I can't, I can't get too far into it right now because um, of wandering ears, but it's, uh, it's going to be fun, and I think we're going to probably do that based on these Ryzen 3, probably the 3300. I'll do the top end one with the B550 board, throw a PCI 4 SSD in there and everything. Be really good for schoolwork, uh, gaming. Obviously, schoolwork from home right now is highly important, so that'll get him out of the living room on the computer down there, and upstairs onto his own computer. So that's going to be a good thing. Going to be a good project, which I hope to be covering for you guys uh, very soon on the channel once I will have the new CPUs in hand. So keep an eye out for that in the very near future. Next up, I wanted to quickly talk about GeForce Now, who has had some more games pulled from the now growing list of publishers that are not allowing their games onto the platform, despite the fact that people that are using it actually need to own licenses to the games anyway, which doesn't make any sense, and to be honest, it's really not NVIDIA's fault, but because of the way publishers are reacting to GeForce Now and pulling their titles from the platform, it's making GeForce Now just not a worth, uh, worth, worthwhile platform for people to invest their money in and a subscription for it, even though it's, you know, uh, you're still dealing with latency and stuff like that, which is better than a lot of other services out there, but it's still there, and it's one of the caveats that I personally would not really want to use it anyway. But for the people that really can't afford to build a gaming PC or buy a console and want to use GeForce Now on like, you know, a cheap laptop or a cheaper uh, older PC and can actually take advantage of GeForce Now, um, you know, a lot of the games they might want to play aren't even available on there. So to add to the growing list, um, just yesterday they announced that they are going to be pulling games from Warner Brothers, Xbox Game Studios, Codemasters, and Cly, which I've never personally heard of. In their press release, they said, we're transitioning as many games to GeForce now as possible over this time. For those leaving, we'll give gamers as much notice as possible. Games from Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, Xbox Game Studios, Codemasters, and Cly Entertainment will be, will be removed from the service on Friday, April 24th, and we'll hope that they return in the future, but that has not been really the case with other publishers out there who are looking to get some kind of like exclusive deals and really get more money out of it, even though people need to buy the games to play it on there. It's not a subscription service like other things like a Uplay Plus or Origin Premiere where you're paying a monthly fee to, you know, Activision Blizzard or EA to be able to get, you know, their library of games. You're paying to GeForce Now, but you're not paying for the games to be on GeForce Now. You're basically renting the hardware, so it makes no sense whatsoever for these publishers to be pulling their games because you're just renting hardware anyway. I've heard there are some workarounds to be able to get um, some games playing on there anyway, but who knows, Nvidia might be forced at some point to crack down on that. But, you know, these publishers that are pulling their games today are only adding to a growing list to developers and publishers like Activision Blizzard, who's got tons of games out there, obviously. Bethesda, 2K Games, and Rockstar Games are also on that list, Square Enix. Capcom, and some other publishers as well. So there are just hundreds of games, you know, big, you know, triple A publishers that their games are now missing from the GeForce Now service, which makes you, you know, beg the question, why would you pay for this service if you can't even play the games that you may already have purchased licenses to, especially for games that are being pulled now and maybe weren't being pulled to begin with. So I really don't know, you know, who the service is going to be uh, valid for or if NVIDIA is even going to keep it going if they can't get these big publishers back on board and having their titles available on there, which may cause NVIDIA to eventually have to increase the price of their service as well if, you know, these companies are looking for financial compensation, then NVIDIA might have to increase prices to be able to make their platform viable, which I don't really see lasting very long if they keep losing more AAA publishers like this. They could lose, you know, Uplay, EA, you know, if they start losing those, then it's pretty much all but done uh, for NVIDIA's GeForce now, which is, you know, it's a shame because it could be a good service for people that want to, you know, use it. It could be, but with all these titles missing, it's really not worth recommending or putting your money into in any meaningful way. So that is all I've got for you guys today on the PC gaming and hardware news. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below as I look forward to reading through those as always. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative in any way, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it, subscribe if you're not already, and if you've been here for a while, consider ringing the notification bell. That way you never miss a video as soon as it goes up live on the channel. And I'll see you all tomorrow for another video.